These years, the world is seeing more and more PDC cameras coming to market. Uh, I think it's a very strong trend, and uh, every time it happens, Skaho is looking into supporting those cameras that are coming in new. Um, our controllers are universal controllers, and uh, if you take something like the Avonic camera that we are going to look at in this video, it fits perfectly with the PDC Fly, for instance, or the PDC Pro and PDC Extreme, of course. It doesn't matter because whenever we do the software integration, our controllers across the whole range is going to support them. And one of the things that's special about our PDC controllers is that we uh, integrate directly with the camera's parameters. So we make sure that the iris uh, shutter speeds, the um, gain values in the cameras are actually implemented in the controller so you see the real values in the displays and we also go through all the commands and in this case it's a visca camera visco vip camera so those commands supported in the cameras will be in the controller and those which are not will not be in the controller and in this way our universal controllers generic controllers will not feel that generic they will actually feel like a native experience so um the Avonic camera comes in two different shapes and sizes. We have a 12 uh, times zoom and a 30 times zoom. They more or less look like each other, and we have them right here. Hooked up with the PDC Fly. Um, the PDC Fly is a nice s small controller with a great OLED displays. It has power over Ethernet, so it's a single cable solution, uh, power and signal on a single cable, and that's just lovely. And likewise, we have the... Um, uh, Avonic cameras, they are also PoE cameras, or at least this one is. I'm not actually sure if the other one, it has a power plug, I see. But um, uh, anyway, it's also quite typical that PDC cameras nowadays are PoE powered, which is really, really useful. So these are the two models, and you can see how they are recognized by the PDC Fly. So we have camera one and camera two. Let's just try camera one. So let's see what is happening when I'm turning the joystick slightly. You can see I'm zooming in on the fruit there. And I can also, of course, I can pan. I can do it quickly. I can also do it slowly. And uh, like that's what I'm doing here. Now, these are basically features of the camera, how it's going to respond to all these commands. I can also tilt the camera slightly and, uh, of course, all these standard things that you do. Uh, if I press the home button on top, then it's uh, homing itself to looking straight forward and so on. Now, if I go to camera two, then of course I can uh, move camera two. We can't see the picture from camera two. And actually, which is typ typical Skyhawk control is you can select multiple cameras. So now we have both camera one and two selected, and I think we can actually move them synchronously, which is kind of stupid, but it's really cool if you want to set uh, the various exposure modes. So if we went to venture into, into that field, um, exposure mode is currently different on the two cameras. That's what in, in is indicated by um, the display saying multi, multi settings. So if I'm turning this, then one of the cameras or both of them will be changed into manual mode and um, they are now changing in sync. So I could set them to manual mode. I could make sure they have the same shutter speed like uh, 100, yeah and uh, the iris could be the same on the two cameras and so forth. That's the strength of, of doing this. If I go to camera number one again, and if I want to change what I can do in these menus, then I press the upper edge on this key. Now, this configuration is how we like to configure cameras on a PC fly. So with this controller, you have not a lot of buttons and not a lot of knobs, but it's really clean and Every button, because it has a display, can serve multiple functions. And that's really nice. For instance, if I press, because this shift key on the far right is configured to do multiple things. And if you press the edges of the key, then uh, it, it is sometimes configured to change the bank. For instance, if I go to presets, so you see on the lower edge of the button, I'm changing between two modes, camera selection and preset selection. And now that I'm in preset selection, I can browse forth and back in the preset banks that I have in the PDC Fly. If I press the upper edge, and this is what is shown actually in the graphic, it says, it says menu. So when I press the upper edge, then you'll see I'm cycling through different options for menu up here. So if I go to, we already looked at the exposure mode. So for instance, in this mode, uh, we, could, we could look at um, focus adjustment. So uh, let's zoom in on the fruit and um, 
like that. Okay, so now we want to adjust focus and I can do that on, on this knob because it's in manual focus. So I'll need to turn it uh, quite a bit. Okay. Actually, something is happening. It's just so fine grained that it doesn't really. Oh, actually, it doesn't even go any further. I think I zoomed just a little bit too far. So if we stay there, ah, uh, there you go. Okay. So I was just. Yeah, it's just a matter of how far you zoom. And now you can see with because the encoder had so fine steps that I really needed to turn it a lot. Uh, to get to that point, but that also just means that we can actually adjust the focus pretty uh, closely um, or in a narrow field, which is good. Now, um, we have other things in these menus apart from exposure mode. We have white balance mode, so I can change auto to indoor to outdoor to one push to manual mode, and I can adjust parameters like, like these. Um, let me see if I'm just moving this a lot you can see i'm adding a lot of red color to the image in manual mode i'm going back to auto again and uh, then we have a mode here with luminance contrast hue saturation and so forth so um that's basically the avonic cameras two of them in different uh zoom ratios hooked up with the ptc fly and um, having a preset selection row and a camera selection row and so forth Yes, um, one of the things that is really cool about our controllers is how you can uh, add uh, labels, for instance, to, to presets. So let's just try that. And uh, I'm now hooking in my uh, USB um, cord from my laptop. So I put it into this port and um, you can see it here. All right, yeah, so um, what I'm gonna do now is open the firmware application on my computer and press the button local configuration. For this to work, you need to be on the same network with your computer as the controller. So now the computer is asking the controller, what is your IP address? And it pops up in a web browser like you just see. And uh, what I'll do now is to uh, click one of these buttons, which are uh, configured to do both camera selection and also um, preset recall. And it has already been configured to actually pull labels out of the internal memory, but I do not have any labels in this memory. So what I'm, I'm doing now is to go to the label section. And since I have two cameras, I'm going to create two rows and only five columns for each of those rows. So now I'm going to label the presets that you are seeing right here, uh, named one through five at the moment, but I'm going to put some different labels. So like close, far, middle, um, door, window, whatever I want uh, to have that. And, and of course, for the other camera, I can do the same thing. So um, I could uh, apple, pear, um, grape, banana. And what is the final? OK, the whole thing. And I'm going to save. So uh, now look at the controller. You see right there, you have the change of the label. So now as I'm pressing these buttons and, and OK, so let's just have fun. So since this was a close one, then I'm just going to press and hold and store this one. This is would be a far. So this is far. And then this is in the middle. OK. And then the door is over here. So that's the door and I'm saving this preset. So if I go to the other camera, camera number two, and I go to the preset selection, you can see that I have a whole different set of labels now. Apple, pure, grape, banana, the whole thing. And, uh, but I can't see the output from this one. So I go back to camera number one and now I'm going close, far, middle, door, window and so forth. Isn't that just lovely? It actually means that you can keep track of multiple presets. No need to note down on a piece of paper anymore because you have labels right on your Skyhawk controller. And that's really, really nice. Yeah.